the 6th International Conference on Sustainability Education, ICSC 2024, organized by Mobius Foundation in partnership with key global organizations, was held recently in the national capital. The two-day event focused on the theme, Greening Education for a Sustainable Future, and brought together over 500 thought leaders, educators, policy makers and environmentalists from 20-plus countries. The conference centered on the need to integrate sustainability into education systems, emphasizing a collective movement towards eco-conscious living and sustainable lifestyles. The event witnessed a special fireside chat with Mr. Pradeep Barman, Chairman Mobius Foundation. Sustainability, population and how we can use education to ensure that there is sustainability which can lead <coughs> towards uh, a population, not exactly a decline, but at least to make it sustainable. I think education is the key, as the results have shown. If you see Kerala, the, the population there is below replacement level, what you call TFR. TFR is total fertility rate, has gone below 2.0, so that the population will not increase over there. So, but TFR rates are, are much greater all over the rest of the world, especially UP and Bihar. These are the two high fertility rates in India. If you take the example of Kerala, Kerala is the most literate state in all of India. It's got 100% literacy. That is the first state in India to go below the TFR rate of 2.0. And this is what population is doing to bring the population down. If the population went up from 35 to 140 crores, the land hasn't increased, the water hasn't increased, and so we face ourselves with the resource uh, uh, situation, that there are not enough resources to satisfy all of us. So education is the key, and we see it from the, uh, from the label of uh, Kerala. <coughs> and if I would remember uh, rightly, in 1950s when uh, Nehru took over, G.R.D. Tata told him that, look, you have to address the population. And Rajkumari Amritkar was the minister at that time, but they didn't take any notice because they didn't see it as a problem. Now, if you see the world, 1800, it was 1 billion, and now it is 8 billion, eight times more. And what we are finding ourselves with is largely due to population. When we talk about education, and this is interesting because we are also talking about choices in family planning. It doesn't always mean that reduce population. It should be based on the resources which are available so that the two of them are in tandem. Can you explain the importance in that context as well and informed choice, how important that is? As I, as I said, when people are informed, then they're able to take measures for population, uh, for population stabilization. I would not say control, I would say stabilization. It is the availability of contraception also that is important for that. Now, why should people want to, to have less children or have one child? It is through education that the, if you are educated, your children can find the job. Otherwise, more people will increase and the jobs will not increase in that same rate. So that way, education itself is enough for people to, con to stabilize the population. The education and things go together because the person who is bearing the child once she is educated, then she wouldn't want to have more children because she will see that the child cannot get into a school, that she cannot get into uh, find a job, and that is the problem which will realize once they're educated about family planning. The fireside was followed by a panel discussion on the topic education for informed family planning choices for a sustainable population and planet already discussed uh, with uh, Mr. Berman what has been the way so far 
What were the challenges? Some of them perhaps weren't even recognized in the 50s, but now that we are aware of it, what's the way forward? What's the data and research going to be pointing towards? Let me go across first to uh, Dr. Purushottam Kulkarni. So, uh, Professor, I'd like to start with you. We have been speaking about uh, population control, but one of the historic uh, criticisms which has always come in from the way that India has always viewed population sustainability is that instead of thinking of it as a reproductive choice, as we were discussing, a choice for women to make the right family planning choices, instead of that, it's always been about population control. How are we viewing that? and what needs to be changed in the way that we are looking at it. There are some scientific studies, namely the limits to growth study, which was done a little later. But all the, many of these thinking started in 1950s, 60s, and it was felt that something ought to be done to control this population. Basically, it was said to reduce growth rate, population growth rate. Mm. And the neo-Malthusian policies came into being. Which was in the 90s. Which was in 1950s. The new Malthusian policies oh. came into 1950s. The old thinking of Malthus had attached with to it, contraceptive use was attached, which Malthus did not attach at that time. So this was basically the thing, we must have this thing, which was broadly accepted, though there were some reservations on this at that time also from political, ideological, religious angle. There were, but broadly it was accepted by the international body, international organizations, various governments and the Indian government was the first one to start a program and it was a very large program of family planning. But the primary issue was population control, reducing population growth. So essentially you had a national goal or a societal goal to reduce fertility which would in turn reduce growth rate. Right. But this societal goal had to be achieved through individual couples. It was not something that could be achieved by constructing, building dams or railways and so on. Individual couples had to limit their family size, regulate their family size. And this was not forthcoming for some time because many couples did not feel that it is in their interest to do so at that time. I'm thinking of 1950s, 60s. You know, child mortality was fairly high and some of the advantages were not well perceived. So, you started with incentives, a bit of disincentives, and then pressures. Because if couples are not easily accepting, you need pressures. And this culminated into the 1976 program, the emergency type program, which you can say the high point or the low point of the program in the sense. And this is what happened, and that backfired. Well, that's a very significant point. In fact, let me go across and take off from what Professor uh, Kulkarni was speaking about. Let me go across to uh, Ms. Amy Jankovitz, if we can have them up on the big screen. Let me go across to Amy Jankovitz as well as Shweta Shirodkar, uh, because they are part of uh, Population Matters. I'd like to take off from what uh, Professor was saying. He made a very interesting point about uh, the kind of imposition which at times came in India as we saw in the year 1975 from the government. And it's interesting because you all are uh, in population matters, you're looking at ethical choice-based solutions for population challenges and also interestingly to ensure that it is done without resorting to anything which is coercive in nature or alarmist in nature. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, education is really crucial for helping individuals make informed reproductive choices and at Population Matters we consider these through two key lenses. Um, schooling in the first instance, um, there's a really, really strong link between education and family size. Um, Shweta will go into the details of um, some reports that we've been looking at, uh, but it's very clearly evident that um, year by year, up to kind of 12 years of education for girls, um, it's in, there's a clear link between um, the, the le less children or the le less childbearing and delaying childbearing and birth spacing. Um, and smaller families. And what's really important to us at Population Matters is not just the women's empowerment, we are also making our new strategy about male allyship. 
and and really about um female leadership as well so it's not just about um women having the opportunity to be educated and and to be working but also striving for leadership opportunities recently looking at population health and environment approaches which uh, the approach which really takes into consideration population health especially sexual and reproductive health and rights and the environment or natural resource management for a particular community so um it is it is it is an interesting approach that takes into account the interconnectedness or the interlinkages it makes the messaging not very coercive uh not prescriptive it focuses on community led approaches for a truly bottom up approach it's culturally sensitive it takes into it takes into uh when i say community led it's not placing the onus only on women and like amy said we're looking at male allyship they're trying to include men boys into the conversation too it's not something that uh the burden should not fall on women ideally um it, it, so it needs to be culturally sensitive it needs to be inclusive um and those are some of the things we at population matters focus on because every community has very different uh, nuances and very different cultural uh, nuances to be dealing with and we have to be respectful of that it cannot be a prescriptive approach now professor onisa if i can come to you now if you can tell us a bit about the research work which is being done in order to ensure that some of the key knowledge gaps Mm-hmm. and the way they need to be addressed and what are being done to ensure that they are addressed to ensure that not just sustainability comes along but also a more effective education model is also being prepared uh, first of all let me add on this thing contraceptive choice about this thing uh, look at our health infrastructure whether we have sufficient doctors to do counseling or whether we have a doctors or technicians or pathologists to examine the woman whether she is suitable for iud insertion or not whether we have supply regular supply of condom uh, because we have done the projects in different areas of uh, haryana and up what we have found it the supplies at the end of something and they are asked to distributed to everybody and 760 to 70% although the study was very old but 60 to 70% was going west and without any testing or without anything you cannot have iud insertion so it's a infrastructure providers then the education the three component are very much important when we talk about informed choices oh, professor yadav i'd love to like to come to you because you've been associated with ncert for such a long time it's important for us to understand the kind of nomenclatures which have been there when it came to population control what are the steps which have been taken and how it has how education has been used to have ensure that at least that there is greater awareness which is available from a young age itself i think the basic purpose is that it, this such type of programs are very very essential because uh, working somewhere and people are not aware what is happening that is also one of the issue so i'll say that uh, as we all know as uh, professor kur kulkarni has also said that education was realized in sweden for the first time that it can play a very important role but in india it came in 1960 little later in 1960 when ncert organized a national seminar on you can say population and that time it was thought that instead of giving family planning life uh, or some sex education let's give the name of population education so in 1974 also when the world conference held and in that conference it was recognized that education should be given priority the curricula should be widened and the component various component of the population should be integrated because up till now we are talking about those who are already in the reproductive stage but there are large number of students that time 42% children were below the age of 15 so it's very important to educate them because they will be the future citizen and then they enter the reproductive stage they should take a rational and informed uh, decision so that time it was thought that population education should be introduced and uh, education was also realized because there was a gap between national goal and the individual goal because the individual the national goals were you can say uh, uh, informed by the uh, uh, by the national policy so policy and national goals were different individuals goal were depending on the culture on the socio economic issues on the tradition on the customs 
that determined the individual goal. So there was a difference between national goal and the individual goal. After the invigorating panel discussion, audiences also witnessed ground stories as narrated by health officials, ASHA workers and staff nurses, teachers and Gram Pradhan representatives. I want to start with Manju Devi Ji, who is from ASHA Sangini Jarwal Baharet. It's been one year for the UMEED project in your region, in your area. Tell me, what has changed in the UMEED project? In the UMEED project, हमें बहुत नई उम्मीदों के बारे में जानकारी मिली है और हम इसी पिल्स के बारे में विशेष रूप से जानकारी मिली है जो मैं क्षेत्र में वितरित भी करती हूँ और पिछले साल मैं 36 इसी पिल्स सेवाओं को लाभ भी दी थी हमारे यहाँ पे फिर उम्मीद परियोजना के अंतर्गत जो उनके फील्ड वर्कर हैं उनके द्वारा काफ़ी फील्ड में मदद मिलती है और जब टीकाकरण होता है उसपे उनके द्वारा काफी क्लाइंट भी आते हैं परिवार नियोजन साधन लेने के लिए। Well thank you देवी मंजु देवी जी हमारे साथ बात करने के लिए to explain to us how on the ground seem things seem to be changing to this extent. Let me go across to श्री निशांत मौर्या जी आप ग्राम प्रधान हैं काटका मराठा से आपने क्या चेंजेस देखे हैं जब फैमिली प्लानिंग की बात की जाए आपने ग्राउंड पे क्या क्या ऐसे बदलाव देखे क्या चेंजेस देखे पहले की अपेक्षा हमारे ग्राम में बहुत बड़ा बदलाव आया है इसमें यह है कि परिवार नियोजन के एक से अधिक साधन उपलब्ध हैं लोगों को अपने हिसाब से साधन चुनने का एक विकल्प है पहले की अपेक्षा महिलाएँ अब खुल के परिवार नियोजन पर बात कर सकती हैं और, और मतलब साधनों को भी अपना रही हैं अच्छा हमारी पहली प्राथमिकता है खासकर लड़कियों की ठीक है हमारी एक सोच है कि हमारे क्षेत्र में हमारे गांव में एक बालिका इंटर कॉलेज की स्थापना हो जिससे ये है कि लड़कियों को दूर ना जाना पड़े ठीक है मैम आपने बहुत ही बड़ी बात कर दी है एजुकेशन इज गोइंग टू बी द की टू और जैसे उन्होंने बोला कि जो एजुकेशन करवा रहे हैं वहाँ पर उन्होंने अपने गांव में इट्स नॉट जस्ट फॉर द वेमेन महिला ही नहीं पुरुषों को भी बुलाया गया है और उन्होंने भी बोला है कि ऐसी बातें हमें पहले पता नहीं थी दैट इज़ द पावर ऑफ एजुकेशन पर हैप्स थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर कृति चौरसिया तो नए नए इनिशिएटिव लिए गए हैं स्कूलों में तो आप ये बताइए क्योंकि आप स्कूल में पढ़ाती भी हैं कि स्टूडेंट की अटेंडेंस प्रॉब्लम क्या रही है और उसको बढ़ाने के लिए आपने कैसे स्टेप्स लिए हैं सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज है कि वो बच्चा घर के कामों में स्पेशली कृषि प्रधान क्षेत्र है तो वो घर के कामों में लगी रहती हैं या फिर उनके जो पेरेंट्स हैं वो लगे हुए हैं तो उन्हें अपनी फैमिली की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी भी जो है वो भी उनको देखनी है और जैसे कुछ फैमिलीज़ में बच्चे बहुत हैं तो उन्हें अपने छोटे भाई बहनों की भी देखभाल करनी है तो इसके लिए हम लोगों ने ये प्रयास किया एक तो हम लोग गए हमने नामांकन वृद्धि के लिए प्रयास किया जितने भी आसपास के गांव थे हमने वहाँ पे बात करी कंपोजिट स्कूल जितने थे हमने उनसे हेल्प ली और जो ये बच्चों की प्रॉब्लम थी इसके लिए हमने एक इनिशिएटिव लिया कि अगर पेरेंट्स हमें रिटर्न में अलाउ जैसे परमिशन देते हैं तो जैसे टाइमिंग है 7:30 तो हम उन्हें 8:30 आने की परमिशन दे देते हैं कि अगर पेरेंट्स की आ, कम, मतलब हमें रिटर्न में मिल रहा है ताकि वो अपने घर की जिम्मेदारियाँ जो भी हैं कुकिंग करके एटलीस्ट आ तो जाएँ जो बेसिक उनके क्लास है वो साइंस है मैथ्स है वो अटेंड करें और इसके अलावा जैसे कभी कुछ घर में बहुत ज़रूरी काम है उन्हें कुछ काम से जाना है तो भी हम पेरेंट्स से कॉल में कंफर्मेशन लेके फिर उन्हें अलाउ करते हैं ये बताइए कि न्यू इनिशिएटिव्स कैसे लिए गए हैं टू इंश्योर कि उम्मीद के प्रोजेक्ट्स ओवर द लास्ट वन ईयर कि उनके रिजल्ट्स आ पाए आप जैसा जानते होंगे कि गवर्नमेंट के जो इनिशियटिव लिए जाते हैं उनके तीन चार ही टारगेट टा, होते हैं टू डिक्रीज आई एम टू डिक्रीज एम एंड uh, आपका टी एफ आर को दो तक लाना तो एक्चुअली वी आर फोकसिंग इन मैनी प्रोग्राम्स सो हम अपने प्रोग्राम पर एक फैमिली प्लानिंग जो प्रोग्राम है जो कि टी एफ आर को डिक्रीज करने के लिए सबसे ज़्यादा ज़रूरी है 
उस पर पूर्ण रूप से फोकस नहीं कर पा रहे थे तो थैंक्स टू उम्मीद कि वो आए उन्होंने ऐसे पर्सन मेरे पास लाए जो उस पर स्पेशली फोकस थे हम सर्विस प्रोवाइडर हमेशा से रहे हैं लेकिन वी आर वीक इन काउंसलिंग हमें काउंसलिंग की कोई ट्रेनिंग नहीं दी जाती है हमारे स्टाफ्स को भी स्पेशली काउंसलिंग की आप जैसा जानते हैं कि व्यवहार परिवर्तन एक बहुत धीमे चलने वाली प्रक्रिया है और काउंसलिंग ही एक उसका इलाज है जिससे कि हम अपने व्यवहार को परिवर्तित कर सकते हैं तो व्यवहार परिवर्तन करने में इन्होंने काफ़ी मदद की सम एग्जाम्पल्स आप देख रहे होंगे डेटा दे, जो है हमारे जर्वल के विद इन वन ईयर दे आर इंक्रीजिंग एंड मेट नीड को हमने फुलफिल करने की कोशिश की हमने अपने अंतरा को बढ़ाया हमने अपने अभी पिछले महीने में जनसंख्या पखवाड़ा हुआ था पिछले साल हम 230 ही महिलाओं को हम अंतरा लगा पाए थे नाउ विद हेल्प ऑफ उम्मीद एंड आवर स्टाफ्स टू हमने इस बार 730 लोगों को अंतरा लगाया महिलाओं को जो कि एक्सपोनशली फोर टाइम ग्रोथ है इसमें हमने फैमिली प्लानिंग के और साधनों को भी बढ़ाया हमने पी ए भी शुरू की जो कि पोस्ट एबॉसन आई होती है जो कि जर्मन में कभी नहीं शुरू हो पाई थी We are to uh, to PAICD, which is also uh, commendable for क्योंकि उम्मीद परियोजना के ही स्टाफ ने हमें ये कहा कि सर ये दो फैमिलीज हैं जो इसको लेना चाहती हैं डॉक्टर संजय कुमार आप सी एम ओ है अगेन इन बाहरीज विद द सपोर्ट ऑफ मोबियस फाउंडेशन वहाँ पर काउंसिलिंग सेंटर्स भी अभी खुले हैं उसके बारे में जरा बता दीजिए हम इस परियोजना को एक ब्लॉक से आठ ब्लॉक में बढ़ाने जा रहे हैं अब ये इनकी सहायता से आठ ब्लॉकों में होंगे और ये जो काउंसलिंग सेंटर्स हैं जिसमें परिवार नियोजन के विभिन्न उपायों के बारे में डिले प्रेगनेंसी स्पेसिंग ऑफ चिल्ड्रन एंड परमानेंट मेथड्स सब के बारे में सलाह दी जाती है इसको अब एक ब्लॉक से बढ़ा करके आठ ब्लॉकों में करेंगे और कुल मिलाकर के 50 यूनिट्स में फैसिलिटीज में जिसमें सी होंगे पी होंगे और कुल मिला के करीब करीब ढाई हज़ार आशा एन और फ्रंट लाइन वर्कर्स की क्षमता वृद्धि करेंगे इनके सहायता से चूँकि हमारी फ्रंट लाइन वर्कर्स विभिन्न प्रोग्रामों के लिए कार्य करती हैं तो केवल इस पे फोकस करना उनके लिए उतना समय नहीं निकल पाता ना उनको उतनी ट्रेनिंग मिल पाती है तो इन लोगों के कारण उनकी ट्रेनिंग भी हो रही है वो थोड़ा अधिक समय निकाल पा रही हैं और इनके ग्राउंड लेवल के वर्कर्स जब एक ब्लॉक में इतनी मदद कर रहे हैं तो आठ ब्लॉक में जब वो फैलेंगे तो वहाँ से भी एक्स्ट्रा हैंड्स हो जाएंगे तो इस प्रोग्राम को उससे मदद मिलेगी नाउ लेट मी गो अक्रॉस टू दोज हु आर पार्ट ऑफ द जननी टीम एज वेल इन फैक्ट वी हैव विद अस मिस्टर विकास राज चतुर्वेदी ही इज द रीजनल मैनेजर ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश ऑफ टीम जननी ओवर टू यू विकास टेल अस अ बिट जननी ने बिहार और उत्तर प्रदेश में इससे पहले कोर्ट मॉडल का काफी जगह पे इंप्लीमेंटेशन किया जिसका बहुत ही पॉजिटिव इंपैक्ट रहा था कोर्ट मॉडल के थ्रू बहुत सारा आई का नंबर्स आया था स्पेशली मथुरा एंड अलीगढ़ साइड में जन्नी ने कोर्ट मॉडल का इम्प्लीमेंटेशन किया जिसमें यू प्रोजेक्ट के अंतर्गत काफ़ी लार्ज नंबर का आई सी डी इंसर्ट हुआ था और गवर्नमेंट्स के द्वारा बहुत सारा अप्रिसिएशंस भी जन्नी को प्राप्त हुआ था सेम सिद्धार्थनगर में विद हेल्प ऑफ मोबियस फाउंडेशन We are implementing आकार project और आकार project के अंतर्गत भी हमारा same model implement हो रहा है जिसमें court van के साथ complete clinical team field में move करती है और FDS डी एस ऑर्गेनाइज करती है तो इन एफ डी एस जो एलिजिबल कपल्स कॉन्ट्रासेप्टिक सर्विसेज के लिए आते हैं उनको सेम डे में सर्विसेज प्रोवाइड किया जाता है और सर्विस होने के बाद जननी फैमिली प्लानिंग सर्विसेज और फीमेल स्टेलाइजेशन एंड एन एच पी टोटली लोकल में करती है लोकल एन में जिसके बाद आफ्टर फोर आवर्स क्लाइंट फ्रीली अपने घर जा सकता है और ताकि अपना कंफर्टेबल हो सकता है अगर इन केस किसी क्लाइंट को ट्रांसपोर्टेशन में कोई प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है तो कॉट वैन के द्वारा 
उस क्लाइंट को घर तक भी जर्नी की टीम पहुंचाती है द सिक्स्थ इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन सस्टेनेबिलिटी एजुकेशन ऑर्गेनाइज बाय मोबियस फाउंडेशन कंक्लूडेड विद हाई वोल्टेज डिस्कशंस प्राइड एंड अ सेंस ऑफ अचीवमेंट द कॉन्फ्रेंस एम्ड एट फॉस्टरिंग अ ग्लोबल कल्चर ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल रिस्पांसिबिलिटी एंड रीइंफोर्स्ड इट्स कमिटमेंट टू ड्राइव द वर्ल्ड टुवर्ड्स अ मोर सस्टेनेबल एंड इको कॉन्शियस फ्यूचर 